What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion about Revit for Mechanical Design uh, Professional Certification Preparation. Okay, so we are now on the topic of energy analysis. Okay, so for this um, exercise, we are going to learn to adjust the project energy settings. Okay, so let's do this. So you can find the tool for the energy settings if you go to the Analyze tab. Let me just double click again to show up all the tools. Okay, so here's the Analyze tab and then you can see here energy settings. Okay, you can find it here on our energy optimization. Okay, so in case you can't find this uh, panel, and then the energy settings tool you can find it here so you can go to the file go to the options and then after that you go to the user interface here you can find the energy analysis tools because sometimes uh, some users do not actually use the energy analysis because that is not part of their uh, job so just like me i don't use this that's why i usually just uncheck that one and then I just select your OK. So as you can see, it's not appearing now here on my tools. Okay, but since this one is part of your examination, even if I don't know how to use this one, I'm going to show you what I know. Okay, so let us learn how to adjust the project energy settings. So let's go to the file and then let's turn it on. So options and then user interface and then after that let's look for energy analysis and tools and then i'll just select here okay okay so the first thing that we will be doing is we're going to open the energy settings dialog okay so like what i've said so from the analyze tab energy optimization so you can select here energy settings okay so you can click this and then here's now your energy settings. So you have the parameters here and then you have the value. Okay, so you have the category energy analytical model and then the advanced category. So here on our energy analytical model, so you can find there uh, several options for your uh, energy settings. So just like the, the mode here. Okay, so this mode... If you click the drop down arrow here, so you have how many modes? So you have uh, three modes here. Okay, so you have the use building elements. So for the use building elements, so you only use this mode when you have a detailed architectural model. Okay, now the other options here, which is the default settings, use conceptual masses and building elements. So select this mode when the model contains only masses only building elements or a mix of the two types of elements which is useful when uh, performing energy optimization okay now the third option here is use rooms or spaces so select this mode when the model contains rooms or spaces so this method uses volumes defined in the building model based on the rooms or spaces in the model Okay, so these volumes may not be as accurate as those created using energy settings. So before using this method, so you need to add rooms or spaces to the model. Okay, so I'll just use the default settings here. So if ever you want to change the mode, just click the drop down arrow. Okay, so that's your mode. So we have a few options here for creating the energy analytical model from the architectural model. Okay, and then we also have here ground plane. So ground plane here, it specifies the level below the energy analytical model surface is assumed to be in contact with the ground for heat transfer. Okay, so you can click the drop down arrow. Again, you can select here what is the uh, value for your project phase. Okay, so the one that you need to ask here is the mechanical engineers because they are the one who is designing this one. Okay, so this is part of your examination. I'm just showing you the settings that is available on your energy settings. Okay, and then what else? So you also have here project pace. Okay, so project pace, all building elements or 
conceptual masses assigned to a specific paste or an earlier building paste are included in the energy analysis. So elements and masses assigned to a later building paste are omitted from the energy analysis. Okay, and then you have here, what else? Uh, analytical space resolution and analytical is analytical surface resolution. Okay, so this two parameter here provides important information used by the algorithm that generates the energy analytical model. So I'll just use the default value here. Okay, so you also have here the perimeter zone depth. So specify the distance to measure inward from the exterior walls to define the perimeter zone. So this setting should always be used in conjunction with perimeter zone division here. Okay? Right. So what else? So you also have here a uh, perimeter zone division. Uh, perimeter zone depth, so average vertical void height threshold. So this value is used to avoid the application of unwanted thermal loads and properties to analytical spaces like ceiling voids and small vertical spaces such as closets and small storage spaces. So you also have there your horizontal void uh, chase area threshold. So similar to our average vertical void height threshold, this value is used to avoid the application of unwanted thermal loads and properties to analytical spaces. And then what else? So you also have here reports folder path. Okay, so you specify the default path for energy analysis reports. So that's the default uh, path. And then you also have here advanced settings. So if I click here, other options, edit. Okay, so these are the options that you can, again, uh, change to further enhance your advanced energy settings. So you have here the target percentage glazing. So you have your target seal height, glazing is shaded. Okay, so target percentage skylights. Okay, so you also have here advanced uh, category wherein you can specify the export complexity, sliver space tolerance, building envelope, what type of building service your project is. So you can click the drop down arrow. You can select here what type of uh, building service is that. And then you can even specify here the building infiltration class. So when you say the building infiltration class, it specifies an outdoor or an estimate of outdoor air that enters the building through leaks in the building envelope. So you can click the drop down arrow and then you'll be able to see here some options for your building infiltration class. So when you say loose based on the help uh, document of Revit, loose is 0 0.076 CFM per square foot for tightly constructed walls. So when you say medium, so this is uh, 0 0.038 CFM per square foot for tightly constructed walls. For tight option, so the value here is 0 0.019 CFM square foot for tightly constructed walls. And then none here. If uh, infiltration is excluded from the calculation of loads. Okay? So that's how you specify the building infiltration class of your building. So you also, you also have the building service here. So you can specify the heating and cooling system for the building. Right. Okay. So what else? So you have here the building data. Okay. So you can specify there the building type. So you can select the building type that uh, most closely reflects the planned usage of the building. Okay, so this setting is a default for the entire project. Okay, and then you also have here the building operating schedule, the HVAC system. So you can specify the HVAC system for the project. And then you also have the outer air information. So you can click edit there. 
if you want to specify the outdoor air per person, outdoor air per area, air changes per hour. Okay, what else? So you also can specify here the room space data export category. Okay, so you have several options here. So you have, uh, I mean, you only have two options here. So you have rooms and spaces. So when this parameter is set to rooms, like this one, rooms, Revit passes the room object name and number to the corresponding analytical space name. So if this is set to spaces, Revit passes the following information for use in the analysis. The space object name and number, occupancy, lighting, equipment, and zoning. Okay, and then you can also specify here the material thermal properties of your building. Okay, so you have uh, three ways to specify the material thermal properties of the building elements for the energy analysis. So you have the conceptual types, that's the default, and then you have the uh, schematic type where enabled, so override conceptual types. Uh, detailed elements, if this is enabled, where the enabled, uh, I mean, where enabled and where thermal properties are specified for building elements, it will override the settings of conceptual type and schematic types. Okay, so basically this is your uh, energy settings. Okay, it's just, it's part of your examination. That's why at least you should know or you should know how it looks like. Okay, so when you open it. Okay, and then... Just practice, make sure you explore your energy settings. You can hover your pointer and then you can press F1 for you to be able to see the complete documentation of your energy settings. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching guys. Have a nice day.